Michael was born August 27th, 2008. Michael was just so filled with energy and happiness. I'm going to crush the monkey bars. Avery was born on October 19th, 2008. She's our third child. She always wanted to be the life of the party, so her favorite things were just really maximizing the joy in every day. Anthony was born four and a half weeks early. As a baby, he started smiling and laughing as soon as it was possible. Connor was born on November 19th, 2010. We were so impressed, and I remember thinking about what it was gonna be that he would do in this world to make an impact as he grew into an adult. When Michael began kindergarten, and it was also a week after his sixth birthday, he exhibited symptoms of something being wrong. We didn't know what it was at first. His pediatrician looked at him for maybe five seconds and then said, you need to get to Memorial Hermann emergency room immediately. And I remember the nurse just saying, I'm sorry, as we walked into the conference room. So we knew that it wasn't good. I think you know, you're told that your child has a brain tumor. And then secondly, that it's not treatable or operable because it's in the brain stem. What do you mean nothing can be done? What do you mean nine to 12 months? I think we assumed that he would have some chance and there would be some treatment that we could try. So I was surprised to learn that that, that, wasn't, that wasn't a possibility. To look at children who days before they met us or weeks before they met me, we're living a normal life, we're on the baseball field, we're starting kindergarten. That you could be confronted with this diagnosis and, and have less than a year with your child afterwards. My heart felt like it was ripped out of my chest. I had no air. And she never once, when she was able to talk, never once did she say, I'm so mad, I'm so angry, why did this happen? He wasn't able to walk, he crawled. <laughs> when he wasn't able to crawl, he would get on his skateboard and would scoot around. Elijah never complained, and sometimes as a mother, I just wanted him to get angry. He never gave up, not once. DIPG research is at a frontier now uh, after languishing for many, many years with very little progress. I absolutely believe that there is hope for progress for children with DIPG. We are learning so much right now and there is more activity and effort being put into DIPG research at this moment in time than any other time in history. We wanted to, uh, you know, fight in Avery's honor, but truly we what we're doing is, is fighting for the children ahead. I feel hopeful that we can do some really wonderful things um, and help these kids so that no parent, no child has to go through what we went through. This is an opportunity to be a part of something that truly will change lives. I want you to donate to defeat DIPG because then it brings research, and that research can lead to a cure, and that cure leads to kids stop, stop dying. I can't wait for a day that I can go in and, and see a child that beats those odds. I don't want kids to have to be taken away from their parents forever. I want to live. <laughs> I want to get better. <laughs> Find the cure.